Let's work on this one first. Notice, 7 minus 6x minus x squared can be factored, so let's go ahead and factor it. And when we do that, we will end up with 7 and 1, and we need to have a minus x times x. And the correct combination is minus x here plus x here. Yes. Okay, so this right here will be the integral, and then we will have some number over 7 plus x. And then add it with another fraction. We are doing the partial fraction. The other one is 1 minus x on the bottom. And we just have to figure out the numbers on the top. Use the cover up method. To figure this out, we will just have to go back to the original and cover the same denominator. To make 7 plus x equals 0, x has to be negative 7. Put negative 7 in here. 1 minus negative 7 is 1 plus 7, which is 8. That's on the bottom though. So we get 1 over 8. Let's try another one. To figure this out, we go back to the original, we cover the same denominator, and to make 1 minus x equals 0, x has to be 1. We put 1 in here, 1 over 7 plus 1, we get 1 over 8. Alright, so both of them have 1 over 8, but I'm just going to write down the answer. 1 over 8, ln, absolute value, 7 plus x. The other one, be really careful. 1 minus x, do a use up. The derivative of 1 minus x is negative 1. So because of this minus, we will have to have a minus here. Be really careful. Earlier it was just 1, right? The derivative of 7 plus x is just 1, so we didn't need to do that. All right, and then we have the 1 over 8, ln, absolute value 1 minus x. And with all that, we are done plus c. Yay. For this right here, we will have to recall what we did for question number 3. So I will remind you guys. Recall from question number 3, we know that when we have the integral of 1 over square root of some number, right, a squared minus x squared, this right here gives us inverse sine of x over a plus c. Why this? Notice that we have a quadratic on the bottom, and then in fact later on, after we complete the square, we'll be able to utilize this formula. So the key is we complete the square first. Look at the bottom here, the inside. We have 7 minus, let's put it down like this, 7, and then, all right, I'm going to factor out a negative here. So we have minus parentheses, and we get 6x. Let's, let's put it down like this, sorry. 7 minus parentheses 6x and then plus x squared. And now, why did I bother to factor out negative? Because I like to have the x squared being positive, that's all. When we have this, by the way, this is equivalent to that. When we have this, we just have to add some number here, then we can compute the square for that. And don't forget to undo that little part. To figure out this number, we look at the coefficient of x, which we have 6. We take half of that, which is 3, and we square that, which we get 9. So we will have to add the 9 right here. But no care, this is inside of this parentheses, which is actually a negative 9. I will have to what? I will have to go out here, and then I will have to add 9 to it. Because this is minus 9, I will actually have to add 9 to this right here. Yeah. All right. So minus 9 plus 9 is 0. So be really careful with this completing the square. And I'm just going to put this down first. 7 plus 9, which is 16, minus the parentheses. This part in red is parentheses. Let's just keep the 3 first, right? 3 plus x like this, square. Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, this integral is the same as integral of 1 over square root. We have 16, which is the same as 4 square, because we need to look at this as a square, so 4 square, and then minus parentheses 3 plus x, and then square. Yeah. Now, take a quick use up, let u equal 3 plus x, and the derivative of that is just dx is equal to 
du. So you don't have to divide anything or multiply by anything. The a here is 4. So use this formula, we will end up with inverse sine of 3 plus x. Right? This right here is our function, which is this input. So we have 3 plus x. Of course, you can also write here as x plus 3 if you would like. And then divide it by 4. Yeah, like that. Plus c. Done.